guys, I'm Maria, how's it going? So today I'm really excited, I'm going to be doing the coffee film tag and I was tagged by the lovely Adele, also known as Roll Credits and I believe she was tagged by Impression Blend so I'm really excited how this is sort of moving forward and as soon as I heard of it, I didn't know about this tag beforehand and as soon as I heard coffee and film, it's like a match made in heaven Making coffee, especially in the morning, it's a ritual, it's sacred, it's something you look forward to, and I think that goes very well with the way I feel about movies. There's just something that needs to happen for it to be enjoyable and fun, and I love pairing these two together, and I'm very excited to answer these questions. But before we start, I believe part of the tag is showing you the mug, or the coffee mug that you will be using, and this one is mine, and I absolutely love it. It is the yellow submarine with the Beatles in it. I think if you've seen my videos for quite a while, you know that I am a big Beatles fan. I have a yellow submarine lunchbox in my shelf display, and I just, I thought it was really cute. This was a present, I think, from my brother for Christmas last year, and I love it. And when it heats up, the Beatles kind of come out like they're inside the submarine, and I mean, it doesn't get better than that, does it? Cheers! So I got my coffee, I got my questions, so let's get started! Number one is Black Coffee, a movie that is hard to get into but it has a lot of hardcore fans. I would say something more contemporary and that people really love and I just don't feel so much is the Hunger Games trilogy or saga, whatever you want to call it. I just, I, I don't know what it is about it, but it it annoys me, and it has nothing to do with how the movies are made. I just have some issues with the storyline and certain plot points that just, oh, they really irk me. And I just, I can't get behind it. I've tried it, I've seen every movie, uh, I've read some of the books, and it's just, it's not my cup of tea or coffee. And yeah, that's one of them. And another one I think that's more sort of classic is The Hurt Locker. I I never liked the movie. I think the Oscar buzz really annoyed me more than anything else. I just thought it was an okay movie and people, I don't know a single person who doesn't completely love this movie. I haven't heard a person who kind of likes it or dislikes it. They just love it and I just, it's a Jeremy Renner thing. It's the whole story and sort of just, I, I can't get behind it. I'm not a fan. Um, yeah, never have been. <laughs> Number two is Peppermint Mocha, a film that gets more popular during the holiday season. Um, I feel like the choices here are very limited and everybody always likes the same kind of movies. But I think I really enjoy watching The Holiday. It's actually a movie that I enjoy watching any time of the year. I think it's so great and I think that's the way romantic movies should be made, especially rom-coms. It's witty and it's funny and it just makes you feel good and warm inside. And it's not so much a film about the holidays where, you know, you have the awkward family events and the dinners and the disasters and just sort of the very cliched ideas of what holiday movies should be like. It is set during Christmas and New Year's Eve, but it's just more about finding yourself and getting away from everything that you know in a time where you cling to those things more than any other time and sort of becoming better for it and more enlightened and happy and it's just Nancy Myers is an amazing writer anything she does to, for me it's gold number three is hot chocolate film a film that you love from your childhood I believe that's the question oh I have so many like I still love so many of my childhood movies but I think the one that always comes to mind very quickly is Beauty and the Beast it's a movie that I see I own, I love, I love all the Disney movies. But Beauty and the Beast, every time I see it I go, wow, this is clearly the renaissance time for Disney. It's so well made, the story is so good, and I feel complicated, and you know, it's the first time I feel like we get a male character that is not just some perfect prince in some faraway land coming to rescue her, you know, he has flaws and he's, he's a fleshed out character. And I love the chemistry, I love the music, the way it was animated. Oh, I love Beauty and the Beast. I could watch it every single day. And I think I did once for two weeks straight. And I was like 24. Number four is A Double Shot of Espresso, a movie that kept you on the edge of your seat from beginning to end. And I can immediately think about Inception. I just remember watching this movie not knowing much about it, but just being immediately 
hooked by the premise and the idea of a dream within a dream and a type of like, you know, plan to manipulate this man and his humongous company, but all the demons that all these characters have inside as well. It's just so perfectly layered, literally speaking and metaphorically speaking. It's just so good. I think it's Christopher Nolan at his best. And I, I never felt like it was too confusing or too crazy. The ending, I think, of course, has become iconic. It just really had me going. I love that movie. And it's, it's one of those movies I think you can watch again and again. And you still find little details in it. Because Christopher Nolan is nothing if not perfectionist and a detailed director. And there's always something to find. And I love that. I love that it still sparks an argument with people. Number five is Starbucks, a movie you see everywhere. <sighs> I wouldn't call this a movie per se, it's not one movie, but I just have a big problem with seeing Marvel movies everywhere. It's just freaking everywhere. The merchandise, the clothing, the DVDs, you know, the posters, the theories. It's like everything regarding the movie industry has been bombarded by anything to do with superheroes and I am so fed up with it. I'm so tired of the hype. I don't mind going to see the movie and enjoying it and you know, I, I really like them. I just get so tired of this like humongous buzz around it before it even starts. I'm just so tired of it. I could go a whole year without having to listen to anything regarding Marvel and their movies and their cinematic universe and their theories. I could really use a break. Number six is Hipster Coffee Shop. Give an indie movie a shout out. I think I normally go more for the indie movies than I do for very commercial mainstream movies. The one I can always think about is Before Sunset and uh, oh I actually have a picture right there of it. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time and I think it's a movie that I stumbled upon again not knowing what it was just a very simple premise of a boy and a girl who met and years have passed and maybe they would meet again and I loved it. It's so non-traditional, the way the film is carried out. It all happens in one day, uh, actually in one afternoon. It's all like a very long continuous scene of conversation. So you feel like you're part of this date of this encounter between these two people who have such, you know, beautiful history that happened a very long time ago. And it just really made me fall in love with it, with the characters, with the story. And I think it's a movie that everybody should see. I love it. I could never stop talking about it. Number seven is Oops, I Got Decaf, a movie that you expected a lot more from. There have been so many disappointments, especially in the past few years, that I think a movie that I was really looking forward to and it just kind of fell flat for me was Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. I am a huge fan of the first one and it really introduced me to these type of graphic novels and to Frank Miller's writing, which is just exquisite. And I was really looking forward for a sequel for a very long time, for many years, because I know there are several volumes to Sin City and there's just so much material you can choose from. So when I heard this movie was coming out, I was so stoked. I was just so excited to see it, to see some of the same stories maybe taking place before or after the first movie. And then when it came out, I, I, I don't know what it was. It's not a bad movie. It just really doesn't live up to the first one. It felt sort of like it, they took too long to make it. It wasn't good. The stories they picked were very sort of not so entertaining. The characters were not as great. I just, I don't know, I was very disappointed because I really loved the first one, like I said. And I was really hoping that they could make a couple of more that would be just as good. And it just, it didn't happen, at least for me. Number eight is The Perfect Blend, a movie that was bittersweet but it still left you satisfied. This might sound like a very cheesy answer, I don't know, it depends if you like the movie or not, but I think that movie for me is Slumdog Millionaire. It's one of those movies that I just, it, it has so many sad elements but there's like this recurring theme of hope and positivity and like good people get what they deserve, you know, they get to have happiness. Uh, but you have to fight for it. And I just, every time I see it, I cry in the same places. I think the character of Death Patel is so tender and innocent and sweet amidst all this commotion and evil and just people trying to survive but having to do terrible things and he just remains so true to himself. It makes me 
I don't know, it makes my heart sore. The score is beautiful. Danny Boyle directing just is out of the park. I loved the story. It felt like it was so original. And yeah, I always cry at the end. Always. Without fail. Number 9, Coffee with a Little Too Much Sugar, a movie that you enjoy a little too much. I don't think this is supposed to be a guilty pleasure movie. I think it's a movie that you just cannot stop talking about or just always mention. And I think for me that's Phantom of the Opera. And I'm talking about the 2004 one. I know it might not be the best rendition, but it was the first one I saw. So it was, I was very impressionable. It's, to me that's like the first one, you know, so I'm sorry if you didn't like it. I'm just completely and totally and worryingly in love with the Phantom, the character, who he is, the way it's just, I'm at a loss for words. He's just so obscure and wonderful. And I think people kind of really crave that all-consuming love. Yes, it's not realistic, I'm aware of that, but there's something so just bittersweetly romantic about it. And every time I hear it, and just the lyrics and the music of Andrew Lloyd Webber, I could go on forever talking about it. It makes me cry every single time as well, but I cannot stop loving it. It's just, I think, my favorite, my favorite romantic couple in movie history. And finally, number 10, friends don't let friends drink from Starbucks. Sorry to all you Starbucks lovers, but I kind of agree with that. So basically, this is a movie that you warn your friends not to see. And this one's a little difficult for me because it, it's a movie people are going to see if they're fans of it, no matter what you say to them. But if I could tell you not to watch a movie, I would say don't watch Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, again, I have a lot of problems with the writing, I have a lot of problems with the author, but if you're just going to watch the movie and you've never read it, I don't think it's a good movie either way. I feel like the director did the best that she could, but it's just terrible chemistry. And it's a terrible way to portray a sort of taboo sexual subject that can be super interesting and people could learn a lot from. It was just so cliche and vanilla and they made it so PG-13 and that's not what you're expecting. And I. First of all, I get very upset when people start saying that, oh, if you want to see that, maybe you just go see porn. That's not the point. The point is that movies and books can express and show something that's very foreign to you, even if it's sexually, so what's wrong with actually exposing it and doing it? But if you're going to do it the Hollywood way, you're probably not going to get that. In the end, I just don't think it's a good story. I don't think the movie was interesting at all. And it just keeps making women be the sort of virgin, you know, plain old Jane girls who just get swept up by the interesting, mysterious guy who, to him, love is just, you know, being distant and horrible to you. It's just, don't watch that movie. Read a book. Read an erotic book. A really good erotic book. Not just Fifty Shades crap, okay? So guys, that is the end of the coffee film tag. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I hadn't thought of my answers beforehand, so I might kick myself later when I think of better answers. If you like to do the tag, please do it. I would love to see your video. I can't think of anybody to tag right now, but if I do, I will leave it in the comment section down below or I'll tweet you. But nonetheless, if you like it and you want to make it, please let me know. Do it and I will watch it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews and videos like this. You can also find me in Instagram, in Facebook, and Twitter at CineClub Channel. And uh, yeah, that's it. Cheers, guys. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you on our next movie date. Bye.